So that was a short improvisation around a theme uh, by Blind Willie McTell. And he plays it on several of his songs called, for example, uh, Mama Taint Long for Day, Love Changing Blues and Wake Up Mama. And in the video description you'll find a few links to those original songs and do listen to them. As you know, listening is half the battle. Um, the main purpose of this lesson is to uh, teach you some slide techniques and also uh, how to improvise around a simple theme. We stated this theme in the first verse and I tapped that out and also in the video's description below you find the link to the free tap. And after that I will explain every variation, well more or less how I played it, if I remember it well. And uh, I also explain some te slide techniques. And first of all we're in an open G tuning, but I'm tuned a half step up. And this mainly to have some uh, a bit of more string tension. Because this is a normal guitar, it's not set up for slide at all. It has a low action, as you maybe can see here. And it has uh, custom light strings. This is a string set that I use almost on all my guitars. Uh, a Dadario EJ26. It's a phosphor bronze set strings and they are custom light. It means it's a set between light and extra light. Light has 12, this one has an 11 to start and extra light has usually a 10 to start. So, uh, so you don't need a special setup to play slides if you take a few things in uh, consideration. Then the slide I use I now, well, I use different slide, but this one is really, uh, well, I like the most for the time being. And it's um, made in Germany to my specifications and they make it for anybody. I don't endorse this product. It's simply a good product. Um, also in the video description, you'll find a link to that company. As well as other companies that I also like, because I also like, for example, um, a ceramic slide and a glass slide who's well laying over there. But what I like particularly about this one, it is heavy and as you maybe can see it has more material here than here. So it's tapered inside and it sits snug, snug not, not tight but snug and it doesn't go past this knuckle and this way I can still bend my hand without any uh, difficulty. If you play slides on your pinky and the slide is all over the, the finger, I think it moves, uh, it hinders your movement. It blocks uh, free movement, I think. Also, um, I use the slide on the third finger and with reason, mainly because I rest my two fingers, the pinky and the middle finger on the slide and they're simply along for the right. It gives my hand more balance, especially for to do a vibrato. And also if you're gonna play bar chords, it's possible. It is, well, like this, it's more difficult. Uh, some people use a slide to, to do them like that, but uh, I don't like it. But it's just one of the many ways, for example, a great slide player, Bob Brosman, uses the place the, the slide on his pinky so uh, it's not a problem if you do that just do whatever is comfortable for you just like, but I'm just explaining why I do this um, slide playing you can play clean slide or you can play really dirty and this is dirty <laughs> And this is clean. And the different, different uh, difference is, of course, the index finger, the placement of the index finger. That's how lightly I place the index finger on the strings. So I can play, for example, harmonics. It's not necessary, of course, but to give you an indication how the finger is placed and it, it eliminates the unwanted noises and especially the uh, slide noises behind the slide. You hear less that. So that's uh, 
that's well the main thing. Another thing which is important, I think, I always place my thumb on the back of the neck when I play slides, and it just slides up and down. And when I'm playing slide in a fixed position, the fifth fret, for example, like this, it stays anchored here on the back of the neck, and it sort of uh, helps me to do that wiggle here to get a good vibrato. It's not the arm that's moving, it's the wrist and the hand that go from left to right. And your arm should be relaxed when you do a vibrato. Um, and this meat should shake when you do like that. And then your arm is relaxed. Okay, that's about it uh, for the technical explanation. Let's uh, start with the song. So you can download a tap below there and I'll play the first uh, measure. Yeah, one detail maybe. Um, I mean open G tuning, but G sharp tuned up. And here are my E strings that are D sharps now. And the fifth and the third string are G sharps. And that's a C, and that's a D sharp as well, the fourth string. So you tune down the first, the fifth, and the sixth with a half step, and you tune up the second, the third, and the fourth with a half step up. Oh, in the video description you'll find the correct notes. Um, I guess that's about it. Okay, let's start with the first verse. Yeah, you, I use the alternating bass throughout the song, pretty much there few exceptions here and if you, you're not able to do that without thinking about it well then you should uh, probably uh, do some more exercises to get that right because if you cannot do that the whole song then it's not really a point of le learning the rest because you're, you're gonna fall uh, apart uh, at certain moments and that will be not pretty to hear. So uh, also I have a, in the video uh, description a link to a song where I teach more or less the alternating bass song by Willie Moore called One Way Girl and it's a good exercise to uh, to practice that alternating bass. Okay, here's the first verse, sorry, the first uh, measure. I'm gonna play that twice and you see the second beat is a down strum and I do that often, strums, uh, if I strum I use my two fingers, index and middle, and they're held together, a bit curved like that, and relaxed. And you see the nails are at the same height, so they both touch the strings. And the upstroke is with my middle finger. That's in my case the longest finger, so it will hit the strings the most easily way. And you see that in the fourth beat, I hit the fourth string, but I hit hard enough that the strings below the third and the, and the second sound as well. Gives you a four sound. So we play that measure twice and then we go to the twelfth fret. Here we go. So we slide up and we do a pinch. Slide up from around the 3rd fret to the 12th fret, the 5th and the 3rd string and we're adding the 1st string at the 12th fret. And in the 2nd beat we're going to the 4th string and we're going down and when we hit the 2nd string we're going up. So those first two beats. Followed by a pinch and the open uh, fourth string. So the whole thing, the whole measure, the second measure, which we will play twice. And then the third verse, the third measure, sorry. Which is the same as the second, except the last beat. We're gonna pinch the fourth string and the second string and start to the 12th fret. So what we got so far? And then the fourth measure. And the 
fifth measure we played also. So we had that pinch at the fifth and the third string. And in the fifth measure, well, you see one uh, number, the second beat uh, in, in brackets, in parentheses. And you can play it or you can leave it out. It's your choice. This is with and without. I'll play it twice. So it's... Or... Now we go to the fifth fret and more or less do the same uh, uh, riff. That was the sixth measure where we break up the alternating bass pattern in the last beat. We're not going to play the fourth string, but we're going down to the uh, third fret for the fifth and the third string to do that. And I'll play that uh, seventh measure once more. One more time. You can go faster to that third fret, and then you, that way you can let it ring a bit longer. And that's the eighth measure, pitch. Strum, and then we're grabbing a partial C chord. So it's, and then open. Again, our first measure another time. So. And that eighth measure will be a sort of a, a recognizable theme. It will, we will use the whole, during the whole song. Go to the seventh fret, and here I'm playing that third beat. Well, two uh, notes in the, in one beat, so we can let it ring into the fourth beat, and you can let it ring longer. That's just a personal choice. Uh, if you play alone, you can get away with that, of course. I'll play the whole thing really as slow as possible. that uh, last measure we're not gonna play that well we start again for another uh, verse three times it's just one time to start um, uh, the, the next verse and in the next verse I do a variation and instead of going with a pinch on the fifth and the third string I'm gonna start now with the fifth and the second string <laughs> I'm just improvising around a theme. By the way, any note played at a 12th fret uh, is okay. Any combination of notes around that 12th fret will sound good. Because we have a G chord and at the 12th fret it's also a G chord. So you can play, well, whatever you want. Just keep the rhythm. <laughs> Without the bass, what, I did, what did I do? Well, 
the first three strings. Now again with the bass. Again I attacked the chord at the 5th fret with the 5th and the 2nd string. Second string, third string, and then I went to the seventh fret. The first string, one more time. Notice that when I did. I want this phrase really stand out. I don't want the bass interfering with that, so I mute and then I play the riff. Sorry. Again, I start with the second string. One thing you need to avoid when you're playing open G tuning or open D tuning is just the same, with, well, uh, more or less, and um, it's when you go to the 5 chord and then to the 4 chord, you know, that last sentence in your 12 uh, bar blues. Avoid playing twice the same thing, the same figures, like... It's the same and it's boring. You can do that once or maybe twice, but don't do that every verse. Uh, that's very boring. So try to find other things uh, in the seventh and the fifth fret when you go uh, that section with the five and the four chords. Now in the third verse, um, we're not going to play full chords now, we're just going to play the bass and mute it and play single string notes here. Again I started, I pretty much played the same thing as the second uh, verse, but only on, on uh, single strings in. So, And then to the 15th fret. Now I kept that short by placing my picking finger on the string after I picked it. Or what you can do is lift the slide. But in that case, we don't want that, that, that hammer, well that pull off sound. And if you do in very slow motion the slide, first and then the finger, the muting finger, and then you get a cleaner sound. So again. Now what I did here is, I thought, well, I'm going to play the same thing, but without bass, and then resume. One more time. Notice the muting. I did that with the palm.
And then uh, as a variation of the five and uh, four chords, we're gonna do some arpeggios. <laughs> So I'm going to the 7th fret on the 5th string, up and down, and up again, and then thump, thump, index, middle, on the 7th fret. And then... Again, thump, thump, uh, thump, index, middle, and another note, index. your listeners will be pretty bored of that playing on the 12th fret, so we're gonna avoid that. And we'll, we'll do um, what I did is... It's a D, partial D7 chord, 1st fret, 2nd fret on the 2nd and the 3rd string, and we move that up to the 3rd fret and the 4th fret. So we have a G chord there, partial G chord, and I'm playing with my middle finger for the 1st string, and my index finger for the second string, and I play hard enough. See, I'm blocking the second string, but you know, I, you hear the third string hard enough so that the third string also rings. And no bass. And then one measure. One, two, three, four, and simply add. Or any combination will work. Second time after I'm playing the third fret first string to imply a G7. So the whole thing. I should have played that in the in the performance video, but I well I screwed up and I did that in the last verse. But I was planning to do it in the fourth verse. Anyway, um, we're attacking the seventh fret for our five chord the same way as the previous verse with that uh, arpeggio, and then the open string, fifth string. So you slide up to the seventh fret in in steps, and it doesn't matter really. Uh, we begin at the third fret, and what you do between, it's not important as long as it's up, going, ascending. For the last verse, well, let's return to the 12th fret once more, uh, but with a little bit more force, so... So what I did is, the first beat, I attacked with the temp, and then I, I go to the 12th fret and hit with the nails of my two fingers in an upstroke. So 
and that downstroke is partly muted because my hand here hits the top strings so normally only strings 4, 3 and 2 and maybe the first one should ring. This one that's most prominent. And then an upstroke on the first ring. And then the third beat is a simple bass, and then the fourth beat is our open fourth string. It's difficult to do slowly. time after the third beat we're going slowly up to the 12th fret double steps. Any combination will work. I started out with the second and the third string. slide blues. Hope you uh, enjoyed that and start improvising now. Good luck! <laughs>